hands. Everybody, how you doing? Um, welcome tonight. Um, I have a project here I told you about earlier. It is a bookshelf that I picked up at yard sale a couple years ago, and um, we're gonna paint it and make it beautiful. So, if you have not been here before, my name is Diane, and I am the owner of DL Stein's Designs, where I like to make over um, old items. I also do a little art, crafting, mixed media, you name it. I do it so um, right now I am into painting furniture and um, like I said I have this um, bookshelf here that we're gonna make over so I'm gonna show you what it is here we are plain Jane bookshelf say hi Bill that's Bill the dog that's my uh, studio buddy my all-around buddy and we're gonna make that over so let me flip this back around here. All right, I'm going to try to get us in a good angle and see what's going on. There we go. And we go higher. says, I don't know. Huh. He says, I don't know. I just hang out here. I just look cute. All right. Tonight we're using Junk Monkey Paint from the Junk Monkey Paint Company up in Ligonier, PA. Um, sorry, I'm tripping over my words. I'm not sponsored by them, but um, I do love their paint. And it, it is made locally. They make it in-house. Made in the United States of America. And this stuff will, um, you don't need the primer prep or anything you just paint and um, go to town so go bananas Sonia says so we got black and we got mouse and house gray this is their old packaging they used to package it in a mason jar and um, they don't do this they do the paint cans now because uh, paint cans ship easily so if you go to their website you can order their paint so funny story see my this is a well-loved can, and I got a little bit left in there. A little, it's a well-loved jar. If you have a jar of Junk Monkey paint, if you happen to have one, and you're using it, wipe the rim. <laughs> because if you don't use it right away and you let it sit and it gets all crusty, you have to find a tool or two to pry the ring off it so i used this old crochet hook thing to pry to pry it up and then some tin snips to cut the ring people this is not safe so this is going in the garbage so yeah if you got paint in a jar clean clean the rim and clean the rim of the jar um you'll be thankful for it when you go to use your paint again so I'm probably going to use this one up tonight and finish this. So, all right, sorry you can't see my face, so I'm going to do the best I can. All right. So let's put this over here. This down here. What I'm also using to um, do this is good old chip brushes. I got mine at Walmart. You can get these at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, Harbor Freight. They come in all kinds of sizes, so there we go. So I'm going to do a um, distressed wood um, technique. And um, if you could see my shelf back here, it has the same kind of technique um, to it. It looks old and weathered. I just love it. So I decided that um, I was going to do all my furniture in the studio in that style, except for my desk. My desk is teal. And I just love it. But everything is kind of worn and distressed. And um, 
gray and it, something it just really makes me happy so this is my last paint piece of furniture i'm painting for myself and then um i got some flips to do so uh later on next week or in a weekend depending on what time i have so if you want to stir your paint up or get a stir stick or a uh i've been using it so it's pretty well stirred um popsicle stick stir stick you know old old knife or something stir it up sometimes they need stirred up all i'm going to do is go along the edges just like this this is all i'm going to do and put the black right along the edges Kind of gives us a shadow effect, or I mean, that's kind of where things get old, cruddy, dirty. So it just kind of gives it a neat shadow effect, I think. You know, it has that old um, weathered, worn um, wood, leathered, weathered, yeah, leather look. And uh, this has a little bit of uh, beveled here on the sides so you want to get your sides and notice I'm not going down the middle so let's see and get it on there and ta-da okay so let's see what happened lunch lady land here today um let's see what did we have in lunch lady land lunch lady land we had yogurt parfaits Ugh, get down here with yogurt parfaits and green beans of course chicken nuggets and Oh, peanut butter and jelly and ham sandwiches. All the kids' favorites. Yogurts are kind of hit or miss depending on what I put into them. I usually put blueberries, and for some strange reason, I thought there was, I didn't get them out. And my co worker didn't get any out. She usually serves straw blueberries, not strawberries, blueberries for um, a fruit option. Neither one of us thought to get the blueberries out of the freezer and sweeten them a little bit. And so this morning I go in and I'm like, huh, no blueberries. So we're like, okay, what are we going to do? Blueberries are coming, but it's going to be too late. So we go in the cooler and there's peaches, government peaches. And they were frozen and we thawed them out. Pretty tasty little peaches. They're nice and sweet. And it's kind of a favorite in the school for years now. So these peaches, when we get them in. So they're in individual cups. I'm like, okay, we're making peach parfaits. And it's different because I didn't announce to the kids we're having peach parfaits. And we have yummy vanilla yogurt. Ooh. So. Yummy, yummy, yum. So, and the yogurt we get at work is um, pretty good. I hope you can see. So. I'm putting these yogurts together. And you got the orange from the peach and the white of the yogurt. And it kind of looks like a sunset. Maybe with clouds. So, I was calling them sunset parfaits. One child told me she thought it looked like 
And I'm like, by golly, you're right. It does. <laughs> it looked like fresh eggs all fluffy in the cup. So, anyway, so to keep the line going, some of these kids spied these beautiful orange and white concoctions and they thought they were getting a blue or purple and white concoction and here they get there and it's orange and orange they don't know what it is and they're afraid to ask me what is that and a few of them do and I announce but it's peach it's a sunset parfait wow I got one of two reactions. I got, oh, gotta have one of those. And yes, it is pretty, Miss Diane. Or I got, oh no, I'm not eating that. I do not like peaches. I'm like, but they're yummy and sweet like a sundae. Nope. So you know what happened? I made up all these peach parfaits. These lovely concoctions. And you know, I end up serving. Well, I served a good portion of them. We take the lunch count, so. But I had a good 20, well, yeah, kids. Which is a lot some days. Decide that they didn't want my lovely peach concoction. Call it a sunset parfait. They decided that the good old standby chicken nuggets is sitting there gleaming its little nuggetness at them. And they didn't even ask if they could change their minds. They just simply said, I'm having chicken nuggets. Well, I'll tell you what, before I knew it, I was trying not chicken nuggets. And I had to cook more chicken nuggets in between lines. And what happened was, also, <laughs> the chicken nuggets ran out. And then the kids came in, the second line came in. And they had to wait for chicken nuggets because the line before them ate the rest of them. I had plenty. I had a plenty. This is what happens in Lunch Lady Land. Usually not that badly, but that's what happened today. So, yep. Yeah. They were not pleased. Tomorrow they're going to be happy little campers. Because it is taco. Taco day. And they're getting two tacos. Two beef tacos. Soft tacos. And I guarantee you, I'm going to get a few that's going to go, do you have any crunchy tacos? And I'm going to go, nope. Crunchy tacos is not on the menu. It says soft tacos. So that's what it is. Well, let me get up here. Get myself up off the floor again. So, so far, let me see. I have. I don't know if you can tell what it is. Let's turn this around. See what it is? I just outlined it all in black. And it doesn't look too pretty now. It's real rough. You don't have to be... This is, this is such a cool technique because you don't have to be neat about it. What I'm going to do is... mouse and house gray and my other paintbrush I added a little water to this because it was sitting for a little bit so just to kind of get everything working again and I have to stir it okay mouse so it might be a little more watering than usual all I'm gonna do is go down the middle get it on and as I hit that black area, it's going to streak right in to my gray. 
Now I'm just going to take a long stroke. All the way to the, the edges. I'm going to go a little lighter on. And down the middles. I'm going to go a little heavier on. I'm going to start in the middle. Work my way out. All the way to the edge. And all the way to the edge. And that way it blends that black into the gray. And it gives it that barn wood, um, old distressed, weathered barn. You know, it's gorgeous barns you see in the side of the road. That's what kind of look it gets. All right. Okay. Um, what else is going on in my world? Not that much, really. And lunch lady, Lynn. <laughs> the school district is catching up with the time, so to say. Or, or maybe our company. It may, it's our company I work for. Catching up with the times. <laughs> we have to. Oops, I hit my, uh, hit my frame. Um, we have to punch in on the computer now. And sometimes change could be good, change could be bad. I'm kind of torn on this. So, so far it's not horrible, so that's a good thing. Okay, got the top done. Pull my chair up here. Uh, this weekend, I've told you, I've showed you about, I've told you about Serenity Bead Shop, in Greensburg. One of my my friends own that. It's such a lovely store, and um, they have all kinds of classes. Um, so. I am taking this. It's probably a little advanced for me, but I'm going for it. Beading class. It's a sugar skull pendant. And um, it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to learn um, a lot of new techniques. I uh, just kind of been dabbling in beading, I think. More for myself right now than anything because uh tell you what there are crafts you can do or, that are you don't know, mind doing and maybe sell a little make a little extra mad cash or <laughs> then there's things that take a lot a lot of time and uh i tell you what Seed, seed beads projects or beading in general take a lot, a lot of time and uh, a good amount of skill too. And uh, I, I give a lot of credit to the ladies that uh, do it. My friends, they beautiful artists that uh, when they make things because. Uh, Sure. I think I have the patience. <laughs> but on time. I like doing this kind of stuff because I can get them quick. And um uh, or in a couple, you know, one or two evenings from start to finish, from paint to uh what do you call it? Putting a coat of poly on it and away you go. So uh You know, and you get a beautiful, beautiful piece. Things like some bead work in that requires a little concentration. And uh, you have to sit and work on small things, you know, and, and concentrate. It's kind of like sit and watch a movie or have a movie on, and then you can sit and do your beadwork and keep your hands busy 
so uh, that's kind of I like so what do you think can you see it can we see that I know I'm bringing you in so it is gray it is beautiful beadwork I'm looking outside my plans today was to go to the gym mm. um, after work today and work out and then but in my head I thought if this weather was going to get cold and snowy I'm not going so all day it hasn't been bad at work we can you know when you know when I left for work guess what starts doing snowing lightly mind you not heavy very light when you do this technique you want to do it while you're before your black paint is dried because you want to pull it down into the middle and I think I I think some of it's drying okay I'll find some white spots so I brush the, take my brush, run it across. There's not a lot of paint on it. There we go. So I need tires on my car, admittedly so. But I take care of another car, so we haven't gotten around to getting tires, and they're like not good for winter. I discovered. And we're out. So. My thought is run into town, work out, and then come out from the gym to discover that the snows decided to come down fast and hard while I was in the gym. And then I got to come home on bad roads, up hills, and worry about wrecking my car because I don't have good tires on it yet. I've discovered, no matter what you drive, as long as you have good tires, you can go anywhere. I have a little Hyundai Sonata. You get good front tires on that car in the wintertime. I've been all kinds of places. I go out, and I'm not afraid to drive in the snow. I'll tell you what, that car don't have good tires, you ain't going nowhere. So, uh, that's, that's my dilemma right now. So... Probably this weekend, next weekend, that old girl's going to get her tires, going to get her shoes, because uh, she needs new shoes, and it don't matter what the weather's doing, she needs new shoes. So, I'm going to get her some new shoes. So, hopefully, somebody has them in, and it's not a snowstorm, and not every man, woman, child's there. Looking for tires for their vehicles. That's the worst place. Don't wait until it snows to get tires on your car. Because guess what? Everybody waits till it snows to get tires on their car. And you're not going to get into a tire dealership or a Walmart dealership. Where tires or wherever you get your tires at. Don't matter. One tire is as good as the next. I basically, I drive to work. I come home and I drive to town. And uh, I'll travel all over the place because my car's getting old and you know, I just kind of save the miles on her. Okay, so here we go. Ta da! And then basically, that's what I have going on. I'm going to finish the rest of this and I'll take a picture. But let's do it. Can you see it? There's a good angle. See that weather would look? Ah, weather would look. There we are. So, um, I'm going to finish the bottom and the rest of this. I may even put a black glaze on her just to make it even more distressed. Maybe give it a light sand and then she'll be done. So, this is going to have my sewing supplies in it.
like I said, that's all the shelves for me. Um, it's going to be the end of, oops, I went from dark to white. Um, the last piece of furniture in my studio. And so once I get that this done and load it up, I think it's going to have my sewing um, materials, my laces, buttons, notions, and that kind of thing. That's going to house all that, and I'm going to have a sewing machine next to it on a table. And that's going to be my sewing corner. And then I have paint corner, and I have a jewelry corner. Like I said, I get into too much stuff. <laughs> Call me crazy. But I like to keep busy with things. I'm not one to sit around and watch TV all the time. And I, I get bored. So keeps me from being bored. So what the heck, right? So, that's about it. I'll show you. Watch this. You have to see the sweetness. You like his coat? He scratched all the fur off of him, and this is how I've kept him from biting at himself. He's got a rain jacket on. Now I found at the pet store. He doesn't mind it. He does not mind it at all. I think it's keeping a little warm because his furs, his furs are growing back. But look how sweet. Look. Sweetness boy. This is what he does. He lays here and he waits for me. I'm probably going to have all kinds of static. So, yeah, it's snowing outside now. It's laying on the ground. So I probably made a good decision to stay in and not rush home. And uh, I'm going to make the husband some dinner I think he's gonna have spaghetti tonight and I'm gonna come up and finish my shelf today's Wednesday and I have a table to do I don't know I got that thing to do on Saturday so yeah I'll be back later this week maybe Sunday because we don't have any big plans for Sunday so I might decide just to get on and and do a little something for you or I at least have pictures if it's nice out though I may get the itch to um, go somewhere. <laughs> Look at this. Think of a, a place to go. Hobby Lobby is not open on Sundays. That would be a cool idea. So I don't know. Maybe my daughter and I will go and do something if she's off. So let's go to the mall or we'll find a craft short store or something. Maybe go up to Ligonier. And, I don't know. We'll see. I'm mumbling. So I'm going to go. Have yourselves a great day, evening, and uh, grab a uh, can of paint and go bananas and make something pretty for your house. So, we'll see you later. Bye.